Hello friends, welcome you all to session 16. So we will cover a few more things which I have missed you know which is yet to be covered on the instructions front in this lecture. With this we will be completing all the ARM instruction set. So you are all equipped to start writing more and more programs using the assembly of ARM. Welcome to the world of assembly language programming. I hope you will enjoy this. So, in this lecture, we will be touching on interrupt latency, okay. Especially what is the worst case interrupt latency for a typical scenario. I will explain the scenario and then I tell you how many cycles that would take. And then this instruction, MUL instruction, which I have not covered so far, so we will complete that. And then I will show a few examples, not many. With this, we will be completing this lecture. So, both these sessions will be completed, okay. all these units will be done by today. So, this is the focus of today's discussion, okay. So, what is interrupt latency? First, let me explain I have told you earlier, but let us have a clarity on this now again. See this is the processor okay from an external unit some interrupt is raised okay some signal it could be a low some interrupt signal is coming in from external unit. So, it would happen at a particular time t okay t equal to 0 at a particular time t it is happening because this is. Um, happening from the external hardware it could be uh, UART okay a serial port controller or some other timer or some peripheral which is running independent of the CPU okay. So, it is generating an interrupt it does not have any sense on where the processor is at that moment whenever it has completed its some particular programmed job it generates an interrupt. So, let us assume a signal which is connected to FIQ that is a fast interrupt request okay because the CPU is supposed to respond to this interrupt at the earliest among everyone okay reset anyway is different because once the reset is accepted uh, the processor is starting afresh. So, we are not concerned about that we are worried about an FIQ which is connected to a system okay which happens to be very critical and uh, when this interrupt is raised how much time a typical worst case scenario of a ARM processor responding to that interrupt is what we are going to see in this example here ok. So, at a particular time in T it has generated an interrupt now processor may be doing some job it could be you know executing an instruction which which is the worst case scenario would be a longest instruction which may be a LDM ok. I will explain that in detail if such instruction is being executed or any instruction being executed ARM will respond to the interrupt only after the completion of the execution of that particular instruction please remember because in the middle of the execution if it responds then it cannot know the how much of this instruction is completed how much is not completed. So, you cannot restart without any impact you know impacting the right correctness of the program. So, to ascertain that the instruction which is being executed is not you know left in a halfway uh, incomplete state the processor completes the instruction which it has started executing and then responds to the interrupt. So, when I mean by responding to the interrupt means it has to go to the interrupt vector table ok and then based on the FIQ here FIQ interrupt. So, it will have an entry here in the interrupt vector table to say it has to branch to the subroutine which is a ISR which could be the some um, handler FIQ handler ok. So, the time taken for the processor to complete a current execution and then accessing the vector table and going to the first instruction ok executing the first instruction of the handler suppose it happens at this time. Then this is called interrupt latency the time taken for the processor to recognize the interrupt 
and then it is not enough if it designates it, it has to access the vector table and then if suppose FIQ you remember it is the topmost in the table, so it the FIQ handler itself can start from here, if there is no need to have a branch. So, let us assume the best case scenario where the instead of branching to the uh, subroutine FIQ can write the we can write the subroutine here itself right. So, coming here and start executing this first instruction of the handler is what the time taken for that is what is called interrupt latency. So, this could be few cycles ok few m clocks. So, we are trying to see what is the worst the case scenario that means what what situation could cause the ARM processor to take to take the maximum time to respond to the interrupt or to execute the first instruction of the handler. See the time at which the time the FIQ interrupt happens is independent. So, it could happen just when the current instruction is being executed right, it could happen that is the best case when the ex current execution is just completed and then the interrupt is happening and it recognizes so it will immediately come and respond you know within a two cycle it will start executing the instruction from the handler. So, that will be the best case ok, but we are here to find out what is the worst case, why are we interested in worst case scenario, because we are all uh, embedded system engineers. So, we are oh no worried about what is the maximum time it would take for the processor to respond to an interrupt, we have to cater for that kind of a scenario, because though this is not going to be very frequent or it may never happen in the lifetime of the system, but the system should always be designed keeping this in the mind, because you cannot have a catastrophe just because when the interrupt happened the processor was executing a long instruction and then the system failed, we want a system which always works perfectly that is the role of purpose of embedded system engineers the designers. So, we need to cater for the worst case scenario, so that we our system design is perfect. So, let us see how we can achieve that and how long is the latency that is going to be ok. And then we will talk about multiplication instructions and then a few sample examples ok. Ok, before we start off with that I want you to recall the key things that we learned in the previous discussions. So, this is the relative priorities of interrupt. No, all of us should know by heart ok, uh, what is this order, why reset is given the topmost priority, because this is the uh, something has happened the system has to restart. So, we do not want the restarting of this system taking more time, because we do not want whatever being executed it could be any of these exception handlers system being executed right now and the reset is given then it should stop whatever it is doing the processor and then you should start executing the reset handler. So, that is why reset is given the most highest priority. Now, you may wonder we keep claiming that FAQ is the most important interrupt and it should be given top priority, but data about is sitting on top of it that means what suppose if an FAQ interrupt is happening from the external system ok at t equal to 0 and assume the ARM processor which is executing an instruction may be a load or store LDM or STM something to do with the data memory ok, mem it was doing some memory access during that time ok using any of the load or store instructions or a swap instruction right. So, data about can happen only when this any instruction which is doing something with the memory is what will cause a data about. Assume at the same time the processor is also doing a data access with the memory and then it causes a data abort. So, data abort could happen when the memory is notifying an abort signal right. So, ARM processor is doing a multiple memory cycle it could do a multiple memory cycle if it is LDM or STM is done. So, every memory cycle at the end of every memory cycle the processor is checking whether there is a abort signal coming from the memory. So, assume that the worst case scenario is the t equal to 0 the absolute time at the same time and the memory cycle is also getting over and then abort has been sensed already the signal has been raised by the memory and then the processor 
notices that there is an abort. So, why is that abort given more priority than FIQ? Any thoughts on this? Think it over. The reason could I will tell you the reason, ok. See, when an abort happens, what gets notified? The exact instruction which is executing, ok. Some instruction is getting executed, which is could be a LDM, LDR, STR, whatever. So that instruction is causing a abort. Okay. So it is being executed. This one of this instruction is executed, and then PC is pointing at plus eight. Somewhere it is pointing. So now, if some the OS or you know a handler needs to restore the you know content or you know remove the condition which has caused this data abort and then in you know it has to execute the same instruction again to make sure that it is completed properly right. So, to do that it has to know which PC at which instruction has caused the data abort. So, that should be captured and kept right that means it has to be in the handlers stack or it should be in the R14 of the abort handler. Ok, or 14 of the abort handler should have that PC value, so that handler can come back and execute it and then restore the conditions which cause this abort. So, the PC value should be restored that means what it should be copied to this, if we do not do it at that moment and just because in our scenario FIQ also happened simultaneously where data abort has happened, if you decide to start servicing this FIQ and ignore this we have lost the PC because PC will be now pointing to the FIQ uh, handler and then it will start executing the FIQ handler's code. So, the PC which caused the data but will be lost ok. So, to make sure that this is restored what happens is the data but is responded to ok that is why they have kept data but more than FIQ, but please remember it is not serviced fully what I mean by that it just enters. So, suppose data abort has happened FIQ also happened simultaneously the data abort handler is just entered ok that means what the PC value which caused the data abort has been copied into R14 of the abort mode and then immediately the processor comes back to handle the FIQ because processor knows internally that both are enabled both are to be attended to because both have simultaneously happened. So, it just only makes sure that I note down where which address has caused the data, but I will come back to this and then address it later. You may wonder there is something to do with the data, but how can we delay that? Please keep in mind the data abort has happened by executing some user code, maybe, or it could be some other handlers which are lower priority than FAQ. But let us for a completeness sake or for the explanation sake let us assume that user code is being executed at that time a data abort has happened and simultaneously FIQ is also happening ok this is data abort ok and this is FIQ. So, the reason for causing the data abort is something to do with the user's code nothing to do with the FIQ or FIQ's handler ok FIQ handler can be executed without any problem even it can have a some load store or whatever it will not it may not have problem the problem is only with the user code which where the user has put some value in some base register maybe it is R2 suppose the user has written some address here which is not in the memory. So, it is causing an abort. So, you can always defer this addressing this problem compared to executing the FAQ handler. So, you have to have a complete picture of what is happening then only you will know what, what is the reason behind giving a higher priority to data, but at the same time we do not complete the handler the processor comes back to FIQ handler to complete it and then goes back. Please remember this happens only when both data abort and FIQ happen together and ARM has to service them. Now, processor for this just because the data abort is above the FIQ and it is for valid reason. So, it recognizes the abort it enters the abort handler, but does not execute the handler fully. When I say it enters the handler it has already taken care of saving the PC and the CPSR into the abort handlers R14 and the SPSR ok please remember those things. 
two registers are having copied by the pump processor automatically. So now you can defer this execution by now saving this values somewhere in the stack and then come back and then execute the FAQ handler. Okay, I hope this is clear to you. This is very important concept which is very uh, difficult to understand. So what happens when both happen together? Let me summarize it. When both the exceptions happen together, ARM processor enters the handler. It doesn't execute the handler. It comes back to FAQ, completes the FAQ handler, okay, and then goes back and where it left off, it starts off. You may wonder how will it go back to this because ARM processor once it services this, the FAQ interrupt is disabled, not disabled, at least serviced. Okay, it is not pending. The effect interrupt is not pending. So processor tries to see if there is anything above this which needs to be executed. Okay, before coming back to the user code, it will encounter that okay, a data about is pending. I have not serviced it, so it goes back to data about. It completes the handler and then goes back to the user code which was executing the some LDM or SDM. Okay, so this is the flow of sequence when both of them happen together. Okay, that is a very unique situation which is not under the control of any of us. Very good. Let us now. So that is the reason why this is given more priority than this, and naturally this is given lower priority than FAQ because the system designer needs to make sure that the most critical interrupts which need to be serviced is connected to FAQ interrupt input and the least priority interrupts are connected to IRQ. So based on that, you know you are prioritizing the order in which the interrupts are serviced and the prefetch and user defined SWA is I told you that it is for some running some uh, operating system code it could be for file access or it could be for um, you know memory access it could be anything okay specifically any OS uh, uh, activities. So these are all programmed control flow changes which is done by the part of the program as a, a programmer so this can wait till these are handled okay very good so let us now this is again I have shown you this uh, thing earlier please remember setting this means it is disabled okay what is disabled IRQ is disabled FAQ is disabled if it is set so on entry to any of these handlers okay what is the default status of this I and F flags in the CPSR that is what we are showing here. So I and F flag which are in uh, it is in the order F and I okay in the CPSR okay bit number 7 and 6. So automatically the processor as it enters the reset handler it sets both of them okay what does it mean when reset has happened we do not want to bother about whether the FIQ is coming in or IRQ is coming in when the system itself is rebooting there is no point in worrying about the interrupt should are coming. So ignore all of them both of them and then start handling the reset whatever you are supposed to do on the reset handler. that is why the reset is given the highest priority and both FIQ and IRQ are disabled. Now other things are very obvious when undefined instruction or software interrupt or we fetch about or data about are happening FAQ is always given high priority. Now you wonder even during the data about execution FAQ is enabled okay. So if you remember recall in the priority data about was above this and FAQ was below this please see the sequence this is the priority sequence whereas this is, is just given in an order based on the vector table addresses okay they are not in the order of priority. So though data about is higher priority but during executing the data about handler FAQ is unchanged if suppose it was earlier enabled it still remains to be enabled that means data about during the data about execution FAQ can be serviced that is what it means similarly when prefetch about is being uh, serviced that means it is working on the prefetch about handler if FAQ was earlier enabled that means FAQ bit you know that F bit in the CPSR was 0 that means it can get the first you know if FAQ input comes some peripherals give that interrupt 
then it will be serviced ok in this status, but during reset it will not be serviced, but if it is already servicing an FIQ interrupt one more interrupt comes on the same input it will not be serviced, because the previous handling itself is not done, so this is a spurious interrupt it, it is being serviced, so it will not recognize that ok. So, these are the conditions of the flag, so you can see that the IRQ is always enabled wherever which IRQ even if it is servicing the IRQ interrupt the another IRQ is enabled, why I will tell you the reason. Suppose IRQ is connected please remember there are only two inputs to the processor that means if you think that there is one peripheral and another one peripheral ok maybe this is peripheral 1 P1 P2 you should not think that only two peripherals can interrupt the ARM processor ok that is not the ARM is designed for or any microcontroller or a processor would not have designed for only handling two interrupts or two peripherals. Then you may wonder I have a system where I have a ARM processor with so many peripherals all of them can interrupt how can ARM with the two inputs can service them that is where their interrupt controller comes into play which I have not explained ok. Let me give you a short introduction to that uh, let me take a new page ok. So, ARM processor is there there is a interrupt controller ok IC I am calling it as IC that is interrupt controller ok. It will have so many interrupts connected to it it not interrupt means what I am saying is the peripherals which could generate interrupts ok. So, many peripherals it is not only 4 it could be 16 or 32 or any number of peripherals and then this particular controller itself will be accessed by the processor ok this is ARM it can through APB or some memory map IO it will be able to configure this to say ok these are the peripherals connected to the controller I want this to be given higher priority compared to this. So, you connect the peripherals according to the priorities of the interrupt inputs that interrupt controller is programmed for and then you can also selectively enable some interrupts ok. Some inputs you can disable them that means even if it generates the processor will not recognize it because interrupt controller does not recognize it. Now, the interrupt controller generate one single interrupt to IRQ please remember processor will not come and check this every time a hey, IR you know controller do you have any interrupt no processor is busy with its own job of executing its own instruction. So, the limit of only two interrupts two inputs which are given to the processor one is FIQ and one IRQ normally FIQ is connected to a single peripheral device ok it is a normal convention the most important ok I should not put P1 here because uh, P0 ok. So, this peripheral is so important critical that if it generates an interrupt it should be serviced immediately. So, it will connect it indirect directly to that whereas, IRQ you use it for connecting multiple devices to the interrupt pin. Now, you may wonder IRQ comes and then it goes to the vector table right and then it looks at the handler it comes to the handler. Now, handler has to know ok handler has to know which are these peripherals have created you no know, generated interrupt and which needs to be serviced in the in which order. So, there is a priority maintained and then based on the priority the processor executes the ISR handler ok specific to the particular device which is connected. So, the, the job of the interrupt controller is to monitor multiple peripherals connected to it and then generate the interrupt and then the processor comes back and reach the status register or the which are the interrupts are enabled it looks at those register values in the interrupt controller and then based on the values it takes a decision ok I have both P1 and P2 now generated an interrupt, but I am most important you know interested in P1 first let me serve the P1 first ok and then it will in the meantime it will enable the IRQ and then go back. So, what happens if uh, one more interrupt is pending it will again re, you know generate the interrupt or the handler could finish up all the handling of all the uh, interrupts and then go back. So, it is all left to the individual implementation of the handler and the way how it is programmed controller is programmed. So, 
please remember interrupt controller is one level uh, as a intelligent controller programmed by the ARM processor or the microprocessor whichever is you know controlling that controller and then the peripherals are talking to only the controller and then through the controller ARM processor is notified on interrupt and then it please remember the ARM after that it may serve the interrupt the sources directly it has to get the data suppose serial port controller is there it has to get the data from the individual devices only the controller comes into play to monitor and then uh, create a priority among the generated input that is the purpose of the handler uh, sorry controller ok. So good let us come back so this is how it is done so that is why IRQ is enabled even inside the IRQ handler that is what I am showing ok. Very good. Let us now go go forward. Now, worst case scenario. Okay, the most complex exception scenario is FAQ and an IRQ and a third exception all happen simultaneously. Please remember, FAQ is also happening. Okay, IRQ is also happening. That means it has generated an interrupt signal, and then the execution, the current execution of some LDM, which is a worst case scenario, has generated an abort. Data about okay, so all of them have happened together now. It can happen. Please remember. Now, what does the processor do? Okay, based on the explanation that I have given you earlier, it is supposed to recognize that there is an abort. So it will execute. It will respond to the abort, enter the abort handler, and then it will not execute it fully. It will just enter the abort handler. And comes back to FIQ, okay? To act to work uh, to uh, execute the FIQ handler, it will come back. That is the way it is programmed. The processor knows, okay? Because this is active, this is active, and data bot is also active at the same time. Then it is supposed to enter the data bot and defer the execution of the handler comes. To FIQ handler to complete the execution. Now you may wonder in this situation after the completion of FIQ, IRQ is also there. Will it do this or do this? If you know the priority of the interrupt, data about first, FIQ next, and then IRQ, right? So when these two happen, this is what is done. It goes to the data about handler and comes back. But once FIQ is done, it comes and Complete the data abort and then only it will service the IRQ interrupt. So, that is the order in which it is being handled, ok. So, the worst case scenario you have to complement comprehend all this data. So, FIQ has a higher priority than IRQ. So, and then IRQ also is masked out, please remember it masks out the IRQ in the FIQ handler. So, IRQ even if it is generated, it will not be responded to, ignored, IRQ will be ignored. So, FIQ handler explicitly enables IRQ on return to the user code ok on return to user code only it enables. So, till then it will not be recognized. So, FAQ is enabled. So, data about occurs same time when FAQ happens the processor enters the data about handler that is what I mentioned. It enters it and proceeds immediately to FAQ attack. Please remember it does not execute that only it enters it so that it will recognize the address which has passed the data about handler you know exception and then it comes back to the FAQ vector. Ok, it executes the FAQ handler and then on return it goes to the data about handler resume execution please remember. So, the data about must have a higher priority than FAQ to ensure that transfer error does not escape detection that is the reason ok, why uh, it is given higher priority. Need to add that time now because this overhead is there we have to add the time taken for coming to the data about handler and going back. You mean calculating the worst case scenario for FIQ. Got it? Let us see. Now, this is the timing I am going to show you. FIQ interrupt is passed through a synchronizer. What I mean by that? I told you that FIQ is connected to the processor directly, right? Um, but there is a, a hardware, okay, sequencer is there which will take 4 cycles actually, okay. Uh, the since the time the FAQ interrupt is generated to the time FAQ interrupt signal FAQ signal 
comes to the processor ok this is on ok. So, the sequencer job is to you know synchronize the time and then find out you know whether it is a spurious interrupt or is it a valid interrupt. So, those kind of signaling signal handling is done. So, I am not going into the detail of the signalizer, but you have to comprehend almost four cycle getting elapsed before it gets to into the ARM processor. So, the longest time you have to worst case you have to scenario you have to enable you know you have to comprehend this four cycle also and then for having a worst case scenario of you know responding to FIQ handler you have to think of a longest instruction being executed ok. That also the longest instruction just started executing and this interrupt is coming ok. After this four cycle the interrupt is given to the processor by the time the execution of the longest instruction has started. Now, you have to wait the processor has to wait for this completion. The longest instruction I told you LDM ok. LDM also there could be LDM multiple load, but it could be a two register load also or three register load or it could be a worst case scenario of 16 register getting loaded ok. R 0 to R 15 all the registers are getting loaded from memory using the base register R 2, so because R 2 is also overwritten in this scenario, but does not matter it, it copies 16 values from the memory to the processor ok. So, till it gets completed the interrupt cannot be serviced. So, you have to comprehend this also. So, the execution time is 2 cycle before even start doing the memory access you know that address calculation takes 1 cycle and then you know putting the address on to address bus address register takes 1 cycle. So, 2 cycles are gone and then maximum 16 cycles for every word to be transferred why 16 cycle because 16 registers have to be copied from LDM ok. So, now you we are thinking of a worst case scenario of a data about happening during this execution and FAQ is already waiting and data about is happening. When will the data about is happening the worst case scenario of when the loss R 15 is value is getting loaded from the memory the data about has happened ok. It is not completed the instruction is not completed ok, uh, but no the data about is generated. So, it does not matter ok once the data about is recognized the processor can come back and then execute it at a leisure. So, only thing is data about has to be recognized. So, if that happens then you you remember I was explaining that if on data about this instruction has to be executed after the data about fix is done the handler is executed it will come back and execute the same instruction right. So, to do that base register should be restored because now I am telling you R 0 to R 15 means R 2 is suddenly overwritten here right. So, it has to be restored. So, it will take 2 more cycles to write back that keep that uh, no conditions of R 2 with the updated value of if this instruction would have been executed fully what would be the value of R 2 that will be written not the copied value from the memory. So, that the instruction can be restarted after the handler has done the job. So, that takes 2 more cycles. So, if you add up all of them 20 cycles is gone ok. See please remember interrupt was generated 4 cycles ahead and then before that FIQ could come LDM started executing and this LDM also has not completed fully and the data about has happened. Now, because the data about has happened it has uh, it has to restore the base register and then it has taken 2 more cycle ok. So, that is what that cycle 2 more the 3 more this is 3 2 more cycle for write back ok and then I told you that data about entry has to happen ok. Entry means what it should just at least execute the first access the first instruction of the handler. So, that is also going to take 3 cycles why it has to save the R 14 value right in uh, the PC which has caused this PC which PC may be plus 8 ok that needs to be saved in R 14 of Abbott handler and then current CPSR of the processor has to be copied into the Abbott handler's SPSR. So, those things need to take it will take some time right. So, 3 cycles elapsed now FIQ now after that it comes back to FIQ handler and then it will not execute immediately right 2 cycles because of the pipeline delay the first instruction of FIQ handler will execute after 2 cycles of the pipeline delay. So, that is also have to be comprehended. Now, add up everything 2 plus 3 5 5 plus 20 this 20 comes from 16 plus 2 plus 2. So, 
425 plus 429. Okay. So it is not one or two per cycle. It could happen 29 processor cycle. That is n clocks could have, could elapse. Okay. Before the FIQ hunter is executed. This is the worst case scenario. So hope you understood this. This is the most important. You know, if you understand this scenario, you will be able to visualize. You know, any worst case interrupt handling when you are designing a system, okay, and writing an interrupt handler. You can think about this worst case scenario in your back of your mind, and then accordingly decide what should be the cycle time of your processor and how much is the. Okay, how will this convert into the absolute time it is very simple you know processor cycle is running as 1 megahertz assume how much of 1 clock takes 1 microsecond right. So, 29 processor cycle means it will take 29 microseconds ok before this particular interrupt could be serviced ok. So, that is what I am trying to say if it is a 2 megahertz it will double this. So, I am sorry it will be half of it. So, so this is how you have to compute the time taken for the handler to be executed because that is a delay ok worst case delay. The real time systems need to design such a system such a way that this particular absolute time is at the minimum. So, that any catastrophe can be responded to immediately ok good. So, that was the most difficult part of this discussion today. So, I thought I will spend more time now multiply and accumulate you guys are already familiar mostly you have executed uh, multiply or divide operation using add and uh, subtract, but now, now let us see the instruction mul supported by ong what is the syntax and how will they do I will go a little fast now you guys are very familiar with all the instructions. So, see mul condition you know yes you know and then R D is a result where it is multiplied value is put and R M into R S. It should strike you now ok immediately that two 32 bit values are multiplied correct here you can see that R M and R S is two registers which are 32 bit wide it is written into one more 32 bit value is it correct will multiplying two 32 bit result into only 32 bit value it could happen when you have values which are smaller, but if we have a bigger number here you cannot fit in the result in a 32 bit value you are very clear about that you must be it will at least take 64 bit one more 32, but you may wonder what is the use of this instruction. This instruction is used only when you are bothered or only concerned about the lower part of the result ok not the higher part. You may ask me where are the reasons no there are so many in a, in a typical scenario you are interested in only knowing that lower value or you may be knowing that my values which I am multiplying they are not likely to be larger numbers and I am forced to use 32 bit registers because ARM processor anyway has all 32 bit registers, but I may be doing a multiplication which uh, which is you know not even exceeding more than 100 in decimal value ok. So, you know 100 into 100 worst case how much it will be 1000 right uh, sorry uh, 10000 it will be. So, it you know it it could be fitted into a 32 bit value 64 k is uh, yeah you know you the 32 bit value will be easily able to accommodate that, but what I am saying is any number which you know aware of you know which is whether it could be fitted into the lower value and you are not bother or you think that the higher values are going to be insignificant or it is not it is all going to be zeros or all ones. Why all ones if it is a sign bit value it will be a, a negative value, but significant part of it is only in the lower 32 bit result. In that scenario you can always use this instruction, but you have to be very careful otherwise you may uh, have a erroneous result if you happen to multiply huge numbers ok. So, the rest of the execution is very simple and then one more instruction is called multiply and accumulate. What you do is we multiply two values here and then add one more register to the values in it and then get the result ok. These are all useful for DST operations ok. 
some of the DSP filtering FIR, IIR, all those you know if you have done a DSP course, you will know that there are MAC operation multiply and accumulate. So this multiplication will followed by an addition is a most often seen in the DSP processing. So what is the use of providing one instruction doing both because you are saving a lot of execution time because if you happen to have mul and add you know as a separate instruction you would have spent one cycle executing this instruction and then one or whatever cycle time I will show you and then add will take one more cycle to execute and the pipeline access all that uh, you know uh, unnecessary uh, uh, power wastage as well as the core size also is now one instruction occupy 32 bit where this will take one more you know 50 percent uh, uh, no 100 percent more uh, instructions right uh, every MLA. So, you are trying to optimize it by as the processor has given you one single instruction by for doing both operations ok. Though add will take one internal cycle, but you are saving on code size you are saving on time power everything. So, only you have to what you have to remember is this instruction supports gives you only the least significant that the bits of the result. Similarly, that is also true with the MLE. MLA means it's not a member of okay, it's nothing to do with the politics, it is multiply and accumulate. Okay. Do not use R15 of for any of them. Okay, there is no need for me to use R15 in the code address for doing some multiplication or addition, right? It does not make sense. So, processor does not allow you to use R15 as one of these operands and then RM and RD need cannot be same register ok. These two cannot be same because multiplier and the multiplicand together. So, you cannot overwrite that value with the multiplier thing ok. So, that that uh, will affect the flow. So, it does not allow you to do this ok because the intermediate results it will be saving it internally the processor. So, it does not want this to be a same register because multiplication does not happen together ok. It goes 8 bit 8 bit at a time I will explain you in the next slide. So, for that purpose RD and RM cannot be same ok good. Now, what are the other restrictions I told you this this you know both signed and unsigned can be operated on ok. The values in this register could be a signed value or unsigned value based on that the result will be interpreted. But since you are only bothered about the lower 32 bit value, the only the upper portion has the sign related information, right. So, unsigned or signed will be changing only in the upper portion, the LSD portion will be the same in both unsigned or signed operation. Because of that, there are no specific two separate instructions for this, where the lower 32 bit results are given. So, that is what I am saying results of a signed multiply and unsigned multiply of 32 bit operands differ only in the upper 32 bit. So, lower 32 bit or results are identical that is why the same instruction could perform both unsigned multiplication as well as signed multiplication. What do I mean by this as this instruction only produce the lower 32 bit multiply they can be used ok. So, same instructions are used whereas you might remember add subtract I told you that based on the flag we have to realize we have to uh, recognize whether it is a signed or unsigned it is left to the user based on the operand what the user has expected to have put in. Whereas, in multiply that is not the case because the multiplier itself needs to handle the signs accordingly to produce a result ok. Multiplier hardware has to be aware of whether it is multiplying a signed value or an unsigned value ok. Please remember that difference between a add, subtract, and then a multiply. So multiply needs to be aware whether it is doing a operation on a signed value or unsigned value. That's why there are two separate instructions which are put in in the later part of the you know in the next slide I will be showing you. But in this case, it doesn't bother about it because the low SB LSB part of the result is always same. Okay, whether it is doing a multiplication of each type. So it may assume one of the type and then perform the operation. Okay. So what is the size? cycle time. So, cycle time is 1 yes it will take because pipeline execute state is 1 yes ok because during that time one is happening. So, 1 yes will anyway it will elapse 
for executing the instruction. Now, how many internal cycles are done? M internal cycle. What do I mean by M? M is the number, okay, either 1 or 2 or 3 or 4, based on what is the value on this part of the multiplier operand. See what I mean by this, I will tell you. This is multiplier, okay, multiplier into multiplicand, okay, multiplicand, MD I am saying, okay, and this is the product. Now, multiplier based on whether it has got, okay, this can be split into 8 bits, okay, whether it has got a significant value only in the lower part or halfway part or it has got the least LS 3 bytes or 4, based on that, okay, the amount of time it takes will be increase, why internally the ARM processor does a 8 bit multiply, it has got a 8 bit multiply, so what it does is it is taking one 8 bit at a time and then multiplies and then put the result and accumulates it, so if suppose you have a value which is you know different bytes okay, the, a 32 bit value can be split into 4 bytes right, so if they are all zeros and then only some value is there which is maximum 255 right. Yes, uh, sorry, if it is an unsigned value, it could be uh, unsigned value also, it, you know, in this case 255, otherwise it will be uh, plus or minus to 127, okay, minus 127 or plus 126. So, based on this significant value, if it is only 1 byte, it, it can do only one multiplier, 8 bit multiplication, and then the rest of it is all zeros or all 1, all 1 means is the negative value, okay, and only this is unique, so it has to do only one internal multiplication okay, let us say one is there, if it has got up to this point it has got some significant numbers and then these are all zeros or ones, only the top portion is zeros or ones, please remember these numbers okay, note, the, note on the numbers okay, so in that case it has to do a two multiplication, so internal cycle either it could be one or two or three or four based on the number, so it is so, you cannot say particular instruction will take this much time, it depends on the value that you put in inside the RM, understood. So, every time when you put some different value, this instruction may take different time, different clocks, number of clocks, which is decided by the number that you are putting to the RM. So, that is what I am trying to say here, okay. So, apart from multiplication in the MLA instruction, one addition is there, which is also the addition also depends on the this value okay, whether how much significance it is, whether only one 8 bit addition or you no, know, because of, uh, it is done uh, along for every addition you know multiplication addition is also done, so that will also go through the same thing, but one additional cycle is anyway there because of the uh, one additional anyway perform it has to perform an uh, uh, R and access it has to do okay, even if it is all zeros it was to perform an addition, so that one cycle is taken and then other things are decided by this values ok, so I hope this is clear to you. Now one more instruction, set of instructions, it is multiply long, what does it mean? Let me explain this, here unsigned long ok, the unsigned or signed is specified by the instruction, it will be corresponding to some bit in the instruction encoding. Condition flag is there, S flag is there, okay. I will not explain again, all of you are familiar with this. Now, you see this, there are, see, though it is RD low, RD high, these are nothing but one of the registers R0 to R14. Please remember, we cannot have R15 in the multiply instruction. So, you can use any one of them, okay, as this, and then RM and RS is there. In that case, what will be the result? How is this computed? RM and RS is multiplied and the lower word of the result is put in RD low and uh, higher word is put in the RD high. What I am saying is you could write an instruction with say R1 comma R10 comma R11 comma R1 okay, you can have anything, sorry here what did I put uh, R1 I put I think, so let me put uh, R4 okay. 
now what happens the result is put in the higher weight of the result is put in r1 the lower word of the result is put in r10 r11 and r14 r4 are multiplied and then the result goes here so the choice of these registers need not be in any order it could be anything only thing is you better make sure that they are all different so that you don't get a result which is totally absurd okay so now if you are doing a signed arithmetic the same thing okay these numbers are interpreted signed and then processor internally does the process, uh, multiplication accordingly and then if it is unsigned and a accumulate is also there now what is the difference this result is added please remember these two are same why they have made it this is the usual you know uh, usage okay in a typical applications dsp applications and then moreover if you need more registers then if these two are to be different you will have totally six registers being used and six registers is different registers you have to give you need a four bits for you know encoding those values okay so 24 bits will go in that only in encoding these registers and then remember condition flag will have one one four bit is gone and then s bit is there one one bit is gone then where is the space for you to accommodate this in the 32 bit instruction bit so so it is not practical to have all these registers separate so it is all given same register it is implicit whatever register numbers you mention here that will get added here as a uh, when you mention the accumulate instruction so same thing is done for some uh, fine value so the all about okay r15 should not be used okay so no you cannot use r15 as an operand and then r the r o rm must also specify different registers See, please remember rm is also should be different register and that is for the correctness purpose and uh, even for executing the instruction and the uml and sml are error and signed or signed okay and the result is a 64 bit value lower 32 bit is there and the higher bit is so uml and iml instruction treat all their values as unsigned or 64 bit value sml treats it as a signed two component numbers okay so this is how it does multiply accumulate adds that value the 64 bit result will be added to the the multiplied value and then the 64 bit result will be put okay so the lower 30 bits of the 64 number to add is read from rdlo that's what here you know, please uh, understand that 32 bit lower 32 bit of addition coming from here higher 32 bit of addition comes from here and then this is multiplied and then added to this and then the result 64 bit value is put into the registers okay so we have come to a end of multiplication okay i hope you understood this it is very simple you try out uh, you know some simple number with the simulator and then you will understand where the results land into okay so cycle instruction cycle it is similar to what we saw earlier only thing is there is m plus 1 here and m plus 2 here okay i am not going into the details of this and m is again decided by these numbers which i have already explained to you earlier so this additional one is there in both the places because it is a 64 bit okay so there is additional delay of one more internal cycle because it involves a 64 bit addition okay it is not only bothered about uh, so you have to it has to spend one more cycle in copying this value into this register please remember in the register file the results have to go from the multiplier unit to each register. So there is only two read port, write port, right for the register file apart from the R15. So when there are so many parameters to be accessed, operands to be accessed, and the results to be written, and it's all a 64 bit value. So two registers are accessed. So you will have additional one cycle of extra internal cycle to put the result back into the register file. Okay. So these values are similar to the value that you have given in the multiplier whether they are significant or not based on that it takes so much of time and again it is depends on the multiplier only nothing on the multiplicand it does not depend on the multiplicand or the add uh, the offset or whatever addition is being done okay 
very good now i am not going to show too many examples because we have seen a lot of examples while studying the you know understanding those instructions i want you to try out all the instructions because we need time for covering other portions of the arm core so i am restricting this to just a small examples okay so it doesn't save a lot of execution time but that gives you some optimization okay how some different code can be written in a different way it will give you a clue okay it is it depends on your imagination and how much you understand the instructions so that i want you to use your innovative skills to write optimum code when i say optimum code you should be able to perform job with a minimum number of instructions why is it good because if you can perform the operation in a minimum number of cycles you are taking less execution time and less number of less amount of code size so suppose this is the condition okay if rn is equal to some value p r rm instruction okay some register one of the registers is equal to q some immediate value then go to label if you understand the c convention okay if this is a typical c code what does it do if this is true okay in a r condition huh? what does it do it doesn't even evaluate this why it doesn't matter right when you have this true whether this is 0 or 1 okay this is one already you have said if you are it what are you going to get here also one there is also one so it is a do not cap correct irrespective of this value you are once you know that first condition is true you do not have to evaluate it you may wonder what do we gain by not evaluating please remember in this case it could be a simple assignment ok, but as you are aware C allows you to put a complex expression here it could involve some multiplication to addition to memory access to anything in that case if performing this operation involves so many instructions assembly instructions and which will all involve some cycles. So, no processor or no language does not want to execute or waste time which is not relevant and which is not going to affect your correctness of the code. So, unless you have any dependency you are not supposed to have the dependency also because you, you have to remember that in a language in this like this if this is true this could not this may not be executed at all. So, you should remember that when you are writing the code ok as a caution I am telling you when you are writing C code. So, let us come back to assembly now. Now, compare R n with the P this is the job being performed. So, this R n is not disturbed please remember and uh, here it is not assignment ok I took, took it from the book. So, please remember it is a just a comparison you know if it is equal to equal to. So, that is what it is a pseudo code it is not a typical C code ok. So, it does not assign the value P into R n ok if that assignment happens then this compare what does it do it just compares it it is not assigning this value into R n. So, please remember the intent is not to assign the value it is only to compare the value. So, this is the right choice of the instruction and then now what is then B E Q that is branch on equal if this happens to have resulted in a 0 flag being 1 ok 0 flag being 1 then you can just jump to label label is not shown here it comes somewhere to label ok. So, this will not be executed that is what is required also right uh, C also if it is true it will just go to the label it will not execute this instruction. So, that is true it is in sync with the what is intended by the language. Now, suppose if this turns out to be false then it has to execute this instruction it has to do the comparison. Now, will it happen here let us again check yes if this is not true the branch will not happen because it is only the conditional jump branch only when it is equal to this jump could have happened otherwise it will execute this instruction. So, what does it do now it compares RM with the Q ok. Now, if this is equal it will jump again to label ok the same location otherwise it will fall through the next instruction which happens to be here. 
so it does the job you agree but there is a optimization possible i am not asking you an example because i have given you the code here here i maybe if you want you can take a two minutes break here okay and check whether this two what equal okay this four instruction is compressed into maybe three are they same two minutes break welcome back you should have convinced yourself now because it is taken from the book and i am saying that they are same so you should better agree okay let us let us see whether your explanation uh, matches with mine what is cmp it is executed with no conditions okay always okay so it executes now will it impact the flags of course which are the flags our favorite c z n v okay all flags are if i affected i am not saying whether it's zero or one they are all affected it is reflecting the comparison value now compare n e what does it mean n e means not equal to that means it is only bothered about this particular flag suppose if it is not equal that means if the previous comparison what was performed was not equal then zero flag would have been what zero it would have been equal to zero then n e will be true then compare any means what only if the previous comparison happens to be false you execute this instruction who execute the instruction not you or me the processor so the processor should execute the instruction cmp only when any is true that means previous comparison has resulted in a false right that is what we want if this is false we want this to be executed isn't it doing that so you may wonder what is the advantage see one branch instruction is avoided it directly goes to this branch instruction you may wonder see anyway in my case also this was not executed right the previous case also this is it went there directly now what is the advantage first of all the code size is saved now so you have saved one word of instruction okay you are not removed this but you have removed one label and then how much time extra time you are spending one cycle in the pipeline okay because one one instruction this compare instruction has come into the pipeline and then it is not getting executed if this happens to be true otherwise it executes this instruction and then jumps to label so in this case you may not see the uh benefit so much in the in terms of execution time but you can see in code size it is saved but actually you can save it in a different way suppose if you don't put the label here and then actual content itself if you put here one branch instruction is will can be avoided okay so that will be a very very good in terms of pipeline uh, optimization that means if i say you know you fall through in this instruction itself then this one branch to this okay could be avoided that means the pipeline flush and then restart could be avoided so it will be it would have been a very beneficial in terms of execution time but in this case is a what you save is the code size okay i hope you understand the advantage of this is very very a tricky but a very intelligent way of coding that is where arm scores okay arm processor has given you a lot of Uh, ability to use this instruction effectively okay one more example again you can take 2 minutes break i want you to tell me what is happening here assume there is some value in rn okay i want to know after this rsbi what will be the value of rn okay what is the relationship between the value in rm before and after the execution of these two instructions okay that is the question 2 minutes break okay let us try to see what happens teq what does it mean it checks whether rn is same as zero okay 
whether R n is given a zero value. Okay. Now R S D, you know that reverse subtract. Okay. You should have by now went back to the manual and then referred what is reverse subtract. I don't know whether two means would have been sufficient. If you don't remember, recall what is R S D. Okay. Reverse subtract. Okay. What does it mean? Normally, a yes, subtract instruction. Okay, subtract. Sorry, sub R D. Okay, R M. Okay, R N. What it will subtract? R D is equal to very simple, right? I told you how to write this equation without trying to recall from your memory. So this is the job. Now suppose same thing is given as R S D. Okay. What it will what will it do? It will swap these two. What I mean by swapping means it is not swapping the contents; it is swapping the way it is taking the subtraction. So R n minus R n is equal to R d. Correct? You should know by now. You should know this. But if you don't remember, please. Now you tell me what is happening here. Subtraction is happening between an immediate value zero and an R n. Normal subtract would have happened R n minus zero, but here it is zero minus R n, and then the result is R d. Okay. Now, on what condition? If it happens to be m i, m i is what minus. So, what I mean by minus? If R n was minus, that means what? When the T Q was done, the flags, which are the flags affected? C Z and V, our friends. So n is set. That means what? The sign flag is set. Then m i will be true. R S will be executed. That means if this R n was negative, R n earlier it was a negative value. We are we are we are worried about the sign bit value. So if n is set, that means R n was negative. Now when we do zero minus R n now, which is happens to be a negative value, what are you supposed to get? Plus R N. That means it is a mod of. What I mean by this is what we are going to get the positive value of R N. If it happens to be negative, will be there. But okay, if I hope you understood this. Now, if R N was negative, it will subtract from zero. That means it will just do a two's complement of that number itself. Which will result into a positive value, which happens to be the magnitude of that negative number. Okay, so it will get the magnitude of the value. Now you may wonder if suppose R N was earlier negative, uh, positive itself. It was always positive earlier. Will it impact the R N? It won't because M I will not be two, so R S B will not be ten. So R N will be same as what it was earlier. So irrespective of whether it was positive or negative, you will get the positive value in the R N. If it is negative or if it is positive, will get the same value. That is why I am saying it takes the absolute value of a negative number. Otherwise, it gets the same positive value. So, see how see in a, actually in a C code you will be writing it in you know a big uh, assignment, right? If C is equal to so suppose uh, I I is having an is assigned value. If I is less than zero, you will say I is equal to I. Sorry, I'll write it like this. I is equal to minus I, right? You will do this much in the C code, whereas you will it will generate only this much of the assembly instruction in the finally by the compiler. Okay, so of so optimal, right? Almost like a one assembly instruction per one higher level language instruction. So it's it's pretty unheard of. Okay. So that's the power of ARM processor. Very good. Now you may take five minutes break now. So this is the last problem of today's class. So you can take a long break after this. So please spend some time back understanding this instruction. This time you should get it right. If you didn't get it right the last time, okay. Let's take a five minutes break and come back. Welcome, guys. So what did you learn? So I am not going to explain the slide. Little explain. 
if the above example if rb has either 4 or 5 or 6 rb is what see please remember i have put rb or cra doesn't mean that you can write the same code in assembler in the simulator and expect it to work why it will not work rb and rc are not or a are not understandable by the assembler you have to convert it into some r1 or to r3 but i have put it to tell you that which registers are common across them okay so you have to replace them with some specific registers r1 or to r3 or whatever you like so please don't put r15 there and then try to execute this instruction and see what happens okay to yourself and try to understand what these things mean so carry set this is high high means this is see this comparison is if this is true this will be true okay and this is true this will be true okay so it basically based on the value in um, rb okay it multiplies based on the value in rb rc is multiplied either with the this or this or this but you see you won't see any multiplication at all okay multiplication is a costly operation whereas just with the move and the lsl lsl is what left shift left shift by 2 bits means it's a if you shift it by 2 bits it is equivalent to multiplying by 4 okay agree so after that it is a, either you want to multiply by 5 or 6 which can be done by one addition extra addition please remember right suppose you want to um, 5 into 6 you want to do i can do it in two ways this 5 itself what i will do i will shift it by 2 bits which is equivalent to 5 into 4 so it is equal to 5 into 4 i have already calculated but i am my interest is to multiply it by 6 so instead of multiplying it by 6 i multiply it by 4 by shifting it by 2 bits which is a very you know easy operation and that takes less time and then i add one more 5 and another 5 if suppose if it happens to be 6 i will only add 5 if suppose if this multiplication was only 5 if it is 6 i will add one more 5 so two addition is just two internal cycles whereas multiplication takes more cycle you have seen that m into i all that you have seen right based on the multiplier value so multiplication instruction is much more costlier than performing in addition so we are performing this addition that too based on the data value so number of cycles wasted are very less so this is very optimal uh, implementation of a multiplier so this i am giving you idea so that you can write such a code and cut yourself okay very good so rb is less than 4 you multiply it by 4 if more than 6 it will also be so if it is less than 4 it will be multiplied by 4 if it is more than 6 also it will be multiplied by 6 so that is also you should remember it's not that only 5 6 it could have a value which is lower than this or higher than this even then this is the operation that okay so and uh, we are coming to end of all the instruction set okay next class we will be covering thumb mode which is a, a thumb state which i am not talked about it but though we have seen few examples using them so we will talk about that in the next class which will be interesting topic so with this we are completing all the multiplication and some few examples and the inter latency we covered it in detail please understand this fully for you to have a clarity on in terms how they are handled and how the exceptions are handled okay i hope this was useful to you and go and try it out on the simulator and uh, have a nice day thank you very much for your patience listening see you next next class bye bye